Hello, everybody, and welcome to What Do You Believe? I'm happy and excited to have Morin and Dr. Shreya with us. Dr. Shreya have a PhD in molecular, molecular biology, and, and Morin is an electrical engineer. We're two years with Boeing, and now we're still in aerospace. And we're happy to hear your thoughts, your questions, and everything that you have. And we're also happy to have you, Dr. Nagy Skandar. Dr. Nagy is a medical doctor, and he's a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, and he practiced surgery for 25 years. You also wrote a, wrote a book about creation. You, 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 you were on a lot of TV programs in <laughs> yes. Arabic, so we're happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you, David. We've been talking about Darwinian evolution. We've been exactly. talking about natural selection, and we went into mutations and exactly. how mutations technically takes us backwards, and it can't add information. It can't move us forward into new life. Exactly, because according to Darwinian evolution, you come from the simple to the complex, and for that, you need added information. So let me put this picture um, to explain the creation model, really. The creation model is God created everything perfect in a supernatural action of God. So we cannot repeat that in the lab. Creation cannot be repeated in the lab at all because it's a supernatural act of God in the miraculous week of creation, six days creation. So there was no death originally in the created um, world that God created here. But God gave Adam and Eve, the head of the human race, he gave them the freedom of choice. And they decided to disobey God. And the punishment of that is dying, you will die. And they died spiritually by being separated from God. And they, they died physically because Adam died age 930 years of age. And unfortunately, everybody will die because of that as well. So death entered into the world by the disobedience of Adam and Eve and all the generations that came before, come before that, they have death and disease and illness. And there is an increased mutation from the creation of Adam and Eve till now. Mutation are increased because these are copying mistakes. But this is the sad story. The good story is we are expecting a new heaven and a new earth when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again according to the Bible and there will be no death and no mutation and no disease and no illness again. So what we are living between now is the fallen world. So between perfect world that God created, sin entered into the world and mutation and disease and illness came into the world and then we are expecting new heaven and new earth. So death came as a result of disobedience of Adam as we can see on the screen now and um, this is completely different from the idea of death in the evolution mind. Evolution mind would think that death was there from the beginning of millions of years is death and life cycles continuing till we come at the, at the top at the end. Mm -hmm. And obviously death is not mechanism of life at all, really. So the understanding of death is completely different in the creation model compared to evolution model. Let us, let us see this, um, let us see this um, little clip which is plain evolution and the biblical creation. You hear this one a lot. Science has proven evolution, therefore evolution is true. Since evolution is true and Christians don't believe it, then Christians don't believe science and they aren't rational people. Really, let's put that claim to the test. First off, evolution in the sense that things change is evident. No rational person disputes that. Therefore, rational Christians believe it. We can observe change, but evolution in the sense that life came from non-life and then that life began to randomly generate new genetic information and over time it eventually produced humans is something entirely different and something that quite honestly doesn't hold up against science. In other words, evolution in the sense of molecules to man is not scientifically plausible and therefore should not be viewed as scientific fact. Quite honestly, it is in great opposition to science, that is, observational science, the kind of science we can test and repeat and use our five senses to understand. Science demonstrates that over time, living organisms lose genetic information. They don't gain it. That same science demonstrates that life doesn't arise from non-life. Hey, Follow along if you would. Fact one, there is no known observable process by which new genetic information can be added to an organism's genetic code. None. That pretty much refutes evolution right away because there's no way to go from a fish to an amphibian without adding new information, right? If living organisms cannot produce new genetic information, how can anything gradually change into something of higher intelligence or form or complexity? That is, how can anything evolve from an amoeba to a man without adding new genetic information? The answer, of course, is that it can't. Plain and simple. Now, some have speculated and they have imagined all kinds of things and they brought in artists to produce creative renderings based on guesses and they have been successful in telling a very 
convincing story that humans evolved from ape-like creatures, but those are just drawings, people. They're just stories. But what we really observe is humans are humans and apes are apes. Now, if fact one buried evolutionary thinking deep into the Precambrian soil, this next fact, fact two, tosses so much sediment on it that not even the greatest team of paleontologists with the latest subterranean gizmo could dig up the remains. Check this out. Never, again, never has it been observed that life can come from non-life. So here are two major scientific evidences against evolution. I reiterate for clarity, life has never been observed to come from non-life, and there is no known, observable process by which new genetic information can be added to the genetic code of an organism. So molecules demand evolution doesn't really make scientific sense. Yet we are all here, and life is all around us in various forms. Although evolution cannot account for this, the Bible can. The Bible reveals that the all-powerful, all-knowing, supernatural God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, and all life according to its kinds, that is, each with its own set of genetic information. So, again, what the Bible reveals makes sense of what we see and understand. Evolution does not. Enough said. I think enough said in this little clip. It explains that life cannot come from non-living uh, material at all. If you have all the components of the cell, you will not have a living cell at all. And number two, to come from the simple to the complex, you need added information. To have more functions and more ab abilities and more uh, organs, you need added information all the time. Information comes from intelligence. It doesn't come from matter. So because of these two important facts, really, evolution really cannot stand on two legs because there are major problems with that. But l let me be very clear again. We are talking about the vertical evolution, but horizontal evolution, that means change within a kind, that's acceptable. And we see that because there is a genetic pool in, in, the, in the beginning. And some people talk about macroevolution, that's the big changes, and microevolution in the cell. And say, because microevolution happens, macroevolution will happen. We don't agree about this idea. Microevolution meaning changes within the cell. And that happens. We can see that in the lab. There's nothing wrong with that. But these changes will not be able to add information, to add function which was not existing, and this function is, is added to this organism to develop a wing, as example, that I used before. What so, do you so, think about the genetic material from humans and monkeys and even mice are very similar? Yes. So how would you, you just explain it? I yeah. don't know, I'm just wondering, because a lot of people bring that up as exactly. how we're so different, but and we have a lot of the same genetic Ex information. Exactly. These are the building blocks, which are the same, but they are arranged in a different way because of the intelligent designer God. Let me just explain that. If I need insulin to burn glucose so I, my cells can, can keep the energy and life, yeah? The pigs will need the same. The, the, the very similar, the, the most similar uh, insulin to the humans is the pig one. But it doesn't mean pig and myself are cousins. We are not. He's a pig and we are humans. But the same structures that is used in, in helping the pig to metabolize the glucose, I need it as a human as well. So the presence of, the presence of similarities is not a presence of origin. I like to go to Barcelona, and there there is a wonderful man called Gaudi, and he built a cathedral and houses and other things. It doesn't mean the house developed become a cathedral, but he used the same components to build all of that. Let me give you a little example that we used before um, about just uh, using the uh, DNA as language. And we will put the same letters and see how we can uh, come with two different meanings or different meanings altogether. Let me show the, you this little example. I'll put that on the screen. Chimp DNA and human DNA are 98% the same. So we'll use the DNA as the letters of a language, and it is really. So we'll have these letters, uh, the G-O-D-I-S-N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. We can read them, God is nowhere using the same letters. I can read them, God is now here. I'm using 100% of the letters with two different meanings. So these are the building blocks. The amino acids are building blocks of the DNA. And the DNA can be similar between human and other animals because we live on the same earth 
under the same atmosphere, with the same pressure, with the same temperature, with type of food that we share sometimes. So because of that, we have similarities. But similarities doesn't mean we came from each other. And you would say that because not only is the code similar, even the at the protein level, or the pro yes. that's similar as well, yeah. even between lower order uh, animals and really complex animals like yeah, us. Yeah, because the function needed is, is the same. I need insulin to burn my, my glucose. And the pig needs uh, insulin to, to, to burn the glucose. And the monkey needs insulin to burn glucose. So the end product, which is a protein, yeah, has to function in the same way. That doesn't mean we came from each other. So now they are the evolutions will say we came from common ancestor. And this common ancestor branch, we don't have to go the stages, mm -hmm. right? Now, this common ancestor is imaginary common ancestor. We don't have fossils for this common ancestor. We don't have any picture, obviously, of this common ancestor. It's imagination. But this imagination have a problem because that common ancestor must have massive amount of information to differentiate into all the types of life that we enjoy. So that's a problem. Thank you, guys. Let's take a short break and refresh and come back to talk more. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, or comment, or if you'd like a copy of this episode, please call 714-709-4300 or email us at info at alkarmatv.com. You can also visit our website at www.alkarmatv.com. Also, you can write to P.O. Box 3610, Seal Beach, California, 90740. Welcome back to What Do You Believe? And Doctor, we're talking about the idea that we cannot create life in the lab. We cannot produce any more genetic information that we can add in. And I'm going to like ask you, Dr. Shreya, you've been in the lab for a while. <laughs> and maybe you just came, came out of the lab right now. <laughs> but have you ever created anything from nothing into life? Or have you ever added any genetic information to anything like, like, anything like that at all? We can add genetic information into things, but we already know what it is and what it does. But so we don't generally create anything. No. It has to be there, and then you can implant use it, it. Mm -hmm. use it. Yes, exactly. So the source of information is God, according to the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you don't believe that, you have to believe in the beginning there was nothing, and nothing has exploded and formed everything. So the, the atheists have a starting point, as we do have a starting point, which is a Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Beginning is a time. God is a source of energy and life. And time uh, and the, the uh, heaven and earth is a space and matter. So that makes sense. But if you, have, if you don't accept that, you have to accept that in the beginning there was nothing, and nothing had exploded and formed everything. That's a belief system as well. People with that belief system might ask you, then where did God come from? <laughs> exactly. That's a very good question, actually. God is outside time. We have time because we are part of the solar system. The Earth rotates around itself to make a day. The Earth rotates around the sun to make a year. The moon rotates around the Earth to make a month. That's what we have yesterday and today and tomorrow because we are part of the solar system. God lies outside the solar system, so he's not controlled by time. It has no beginning and no end. Let me explain that. If I have this pen and leave it, it will drop because the gravity pulled it down. If I take this pen and go to a uh, an outer space where there is no gravity and I leave it, it will not fall down. So you can't apply the laws of gravity to a subject outside gravity. You can't apply the laws of time to a person who is outside time. And some people say, oh, it's convenient to put God outside time and he can do whatever he likes. Sorry to speak about God that way, but but I just continued the discussion. In order to create, you have to be, out, to be outside the something you are creating. In order for me to write a book, I have to be outside the book to be able to write the book. So in, for God to create the time, he has to be outside time by definition. 
So who created God is a very common question and we love to answer that question actually. Because God is outside time, he has no beginning and no end. I mean, if you don't mind, do you want to go back to Darwinian evolution exactly. and, and natural selection and mutation? Yes. Do we have more about mutation? Yes, we, we will have just um, a, an understanding of the creation model compared to the evolution model. So on the screen now, we'll see the perfect world that God created and then sin entered into the world. And as a result of sin, there is destruction, disease, illness, crime, extinction, hurricanes, tsunamis and all of that. Jesus came and died to pay the penalty of our sin so we can reconnect back to God. But we still live in a fallen world. We still have disease and illness and, and, and trouble. But the future understanding of the Christian faith is new heaven and new earth where there is no death and there is no pain and there is no tears at all. So that is the full picture of the creation, the fall and the new creation. I think that's very important because that explains as well the two different understandings of death. The creation model in the Bible explains that Adam was perfect and Eve as well. And all the creation were perfect. They were in perfect harmony. There was no problem at all. There is no crime. There is no police station. There is no hospital. We don't need all of that in the Garden of Eden. But with the disobedience of Adam and Eve, they said, God, we are going to set the rules. You are not going to rule over us anymore. We are our gods. And that's really the offer that was given to them by Satan. You will be like God. And that's what people trying in the 21st century. I'll be like God. I make the rules. God will have nothing to do with me. So that's the attitude. So as a result, sin entered into the world. And that's all the trouble that we are facing. In the evolution model, they believe over millions and millions of years, death and life. They can't explain how life started, but they can understand there is death. And we know there is death. So they expect the cycle of life and death, life and death, and some improvement all of the time due to mutation, which bring, bring us backwards. And natural selection, which has no mind and no purpose, will come at the end as man and woman and all this wonderful creation around us. That's really illogical to me. And um, I think uh, we, we need people who believe in evolution to come up with some answers to our question to them. How can life start and how can life continue to improve with natural selection and mutation? Because these are the only two pillars of, of the evolution theory. And you need time, millions and millions of years. I'm going to make the assumption that you're following the creation model. <laughs> yes. But you're still telling me that natural selection, that mutations are facts. Exactly. But we enter, like you look at these facts differently. So they, they're happening. We're not saying that because just to make it clear, there is yeah. natural selection and oh, there yeah. is mutation. Definitely. We believe in both because this is operational science that we can test in the lab. But this operation science cannot be the basis of evolution from simple to complex. That's again on observation science. Yeah. So do you believe you showed those two models that both of them can be proven by science or not? Or how, how do you think, what does that look like? <laughs> yes, right. It, it can be explained by logic because science in the lab, scientific method is you do the experiment and you see the pattern under certain condition, you find the same results. You cannot put evolution or creation into that type of lab, right? Because the length of evolution, you need millions of years, and nobody will sustain an operation for millions of years. The creation model starts by God supernaturally creating from nothing, because the first law of thermodynamics says matter cannot be created or destroyed. Yes. So that is, yeah, the engineer agreed. I'm yes. glad. <laughs> and the second law of thermodynamics is more complicated because it says in a closed system, there is entropy. Uh -huh. Everything goes backwards. Yeah. So these laws, we can experiment them in the lab and we can prove them, right? These laws say evolution cannot happen using these laws because matter cannot create itself and it cannot be destroyed. It can just change its form and energy takes different shape. Okay. And the other one is if you start with organized system, if you give time, it will be disorganized. So on this basis, intellectually, and logically, we say evolution doesn't work based on the operational science. Now, put the creation model into the test as well. 
And we did that in previous episodes actually in detail, but uh, let me summarize this. Take something like DNA. Can DNA come by chance and time and laws of nature? We proved it cannot. It has to have an intelligence. So that goes with the creation model. Can the different, when I was studying biology years and years ago, they said we are different races, the Mongolians and the Caucasians and all of that. They did mapping of the human genome and they came to conclusion we are only one race. That goes with the Bible, Adam and Eve, right? They don't believe Adam and Eve as we believe them in the Bible, but there, are, there aren't too many races. According to evolution, actually Darwin said, there are different races and Caucasians at the top, and within generations, we will shorten the gap, and the lower ones will go into the ape side, and the, the Caucasian will rule the world. Similar words, really, it's not exactly, right? So that proves that evolution model doesn't work compared to the operational science and practical science. We spoke of the fossilization and we spoke about the mountains and all of that. We'll come to that when we come to geology in detail. So we cannot experiment uh, uh, creation in the lab. And we cannot expend, uh, experiment evolution in the lab, but the logic tells us the creation model is more logical or compatible with the operational science. Doctor, I got a, a loud question in my ear from the control room, and, right. and they're they're asking the idea of like we can't. You're saying we can't prove in the lab evolution, but you're still saying that we can't prove in the lab creation. Yeah. But how then? How then? Why does this versus this like? Yeah. What? How can I choose then? Or, or exactly which one is use applicable? the logic? Or why the, does it play out in scientific realm? Exactly. <laughs> Scientific realms, they have to understand that all the basics of evolution to come from the simple to complex and added information, it doesn't work. So it doesn't work. Come to the creation model. The creation model says there is a designer. We'll come to who is the designer. According to the Bible, he has, uh, according to the Bible, he has to reveal himself. I cannot sit here and imagine who God is. Like this table cannot sit here and say, what, what is the person who designed me? Does he have legs like me? Does he have a, 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 a big surface? Like it cannot e e imagine the carpenter or the designer that made it. And if I can understand God with my limited brain, then God is limited. He's not exactly. Limited. He's not. The thing is, God has to reveal himself for me to understand him. And what stops me from understanding him, he's a holy God, I'm a sinner person. So the issue of sin has to be sorted as well. And that's in the Christian faith sorted through the Lord Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Now, the creation model, you examine things that you can examine in the lab, like DNA. We can examine the DNA in the lab. And then we ask the question, can the DNA happen by chance and time and laws of nature? Because these are the methods that they are using in evolution, nothing else. But I can say that has to be designed. If it, is, if it has to be designed, we talk about designer who is God. So it is not testing like testing my level of hemoglobin in the lab and they said this 14 gram. It's not like that. But the evolution model is based on faith. And the starting point is time, chance, and laws of nature. That cannot explain life. My starting point is the Bible. And the Bible, I'm not ashamed of that, actually. I'm very proud of that because I have the evidence that the Bible is a true book and all of that, but that's another lecture in itself. But I start with the Bible saying there is a source of life, God, and he created, and he created supernaturally, not by the laws that I experience now. He sustains the world by the word of his power. These are biblical terms, and I'm very proud to know them and to, to believe in them. So another question from the control room. They keep asking me questions. Okay. So I have to, <laughs> I'm delighted to, I have from to keep anybody. going. Yeah. Keep, keep going, David. Yeah. So is there another theory that works or we can prove or we can put in the lab? Because if both of them, we can't prove. I mean, obviously yeah. you said, you explained why and how we can logically or we can think about it. Yeah. Is there anything that we can prove in the lab or, or any other theory that we don't know about that can explain anything? No, you have two theories really. Either something happened by chance and time and laws of nature or created. That's the two options, really. And each option has a starting point. The evolution option is time, chance, and laws of nature. And we, we, we confirm that that doesn't work. The creation model, God all-powerful or knowing, can create from nothing. And this is the character of God in the Bible. But in the lab, what you can examine, you examine material things. 
you cannot examine spiritual things. So, like I can't tell you how many grams of love in your heart or hate in your heart, because the unit I'm using as gram or pound or whatever is not suitable to measure the, the, the subject I'm studying, right? So that doesn't mean love and hate are not existing. They are there, but I can't measure them in the lab by the same methodology that I use in the material things. And from talking the, for the past episodes, it, it's harder to find that middle, middle ground. Like if somebody's trying today to kind of stick to religion, you know, and at the same time try to, you know, hold on to evolution, trying to find that middle ground, it will be more confusing than yeah. actually trying, because you're trying to put two things that don't match at all. Exactly. But evolution is a faith. It's not science. That's what I'm trying to say. Wow. If you need a massive amount of faith, really, to believe in evolution. Like Richard Dawkins saying that natural selection has no purpose, has no design, uh, doesn't know the consequences, and produce something well designed. He needs a massive amount of faith to say that. Yeah. yeah. And by saying, you know, it's happening by chance, that's faith, too. You, you, yeah. you think that chance eventually is going to happen. That's believing that there is a chance it's going to happen. So you believe that it's going to happen eventually. Exactly. So that there's a belief statement when they say that. Yeah. So there's a faith element in both positions, in the creation and the evolution. But unfortunately, in the public media, they present evolution as the science and the religion as the faith. There is faith in both of them, but my faith is built on logic. Their faith is built on no logic, according to what we have studied. So we go back to the uh, starting point. Their assumption is matter is everything, time, chance, and laws of nature. That doesn't work. We proved that over many, many sessions. We start, we have a starting point with God, and he can create and do all of this. Well, thank you, doctor. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, Nagib Mahfouz once said, you can't tell whether a man is clever by his answers, but you can tell whether a man is wise by his questions. So ask yourself today, what do you believe? Thank you for watching.